Hey, my name is Will. Sometimes I go back and play games that I haven't played in a very long time. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a game that I think is an underrated gem in the Super Nintendo's library. It's a game that I owned as a kid that I remember having a lot of fun with. So today we're going to be checking out Parodius for the Super Nintendo. It's a shmup featuring bright, colourful and weird level design that got me hooked as a kid. So kick back, relax, and let me talk about Parodius for the Super Nintendo. So back in the 90s, the NES and the Super Nintendo were the consoles that we owned. Though we didn't have a big collection of games, I've always thought that the games we owned were all pretty good. My dad was into shmups, so more often than not, some of the games we would end up getting would lean into that genre. So one day we added a new game to our collection of SNES games. Getting new games wasn't a common occurrence, so we were pretty ecstatic. The game was Parodius. The game was originally released in 1992 in Japan on the Super Famicom and on the Super Nintendo, but only in PAL regions. Which means it's a game that never made it to North America on the Super Nintendo. So if you've never heard of this game before, well, there you go. The game is a shmup that features a series of quirky and strange levels with gameplay that is based off the Gradius series. You're able to pick from a cast of four characters including the Vic Viper, Octopus, Twinby, and Pentaro, which is a blue penguin. I remember being really curious as to what this game was going to be exactly. Well, because based off the box art alone, it's kind of hard to tell. But after a few moments of playing the game, I knew I was in for a unique experience and that I was going to enjoy it. See, at the time, I had recently gotten into the Wario Land games on the Game Boy, and one thing I loved about those games was just how weird they could be sometimes. It's something that I hadn't really seen a lot in the games I had experienced up until that point, so Wario Land was something that quickly became a favourite. So, I remember selecting Pentaro as my first character because I was thinking, wait, what? A penguin? What is this game? The game started up and the music was cheery and quirky. In the Parodius, the stages start with a bit of an interlude where a bunch of enemies get sent towards you, and you are able to collect some basic power-ups before you reach the main stage. With this initial bit, I remember the game feeling familiar. Though I had played other shmups before, I had never played anything that had these kind of enemy designs. Everything was just weird looking. There were these floating heads moving through space and these syringes, and here I was playing as a blue penguin, shooting them and eating the candy that they were dropping ridiculous. But immediately I was hooked. And each stage just kept dropping more funny and quirky designs in colourful stages all the way to the end. It quickly became a favourite. So now let's talk about the game a bit more in depth. So each character has their own distinct set of abilities and power-ups that you can access by collecting power-up items. Each character has a missile power-up, a choice between two shot upgrades, minions, which are called options, and a shield of sorts. You can increase your character's move speed by investing in speed ups. This can be done multiple times. The Vic Viper features a missile that travels along the floor and a choice between a secondary shot that fires on an angle towards the ceiling or converting your shot into a laser. The Octopus has missiles that fly outwards towards the floor and ceiling and then a choice between a tail gun or a ripple shot. The Twin B has a rocket punch missile that shoots straight ahead and then a choice between a tail gun or a three-way shot. And finally, Pentaro has a floor missile, like the Vic Viper, and then a choice between a double shot or a spread gun that deals splash damage. It's this variety that really helps with the replay value of this game. But what's also great is if you're struggling with a particular character, you can swap characters between game overs. Sometimes if you're lucky, you'll also get a roulette, which is called a blizzard, where the power-up board lights up and you can potentially have a chance to get a later upgrade early. There's also a bell that you can come across sometimes randomly when taking out enemies, and you repeatedly strike it until it lands on the colour you want. Each colour has a different effect. Yellow gives you points, increasing in value as you collect more yellow bells. Blue gives you a bomb that clears the screen. White disables your primary weapon, but then equips you with a megaphone that throws out a weird sentence. I forgot what the colours do. Oh yeah, right. Garlic breath! No sushi tonight! Teeth in my soup! Noted, thanks. No parking here! Bed and breakfast? Question mark? Enemies that collide with the text take damage, and it also destroys bullets. 
Green will disable your ability to shoot, but will grow you to a gigantic size, granting you invincibility and being able to damage anything you collide with. And finally, red grants you three laser barriers that will cover the whole screen vertically and damage anything that makes contact with them. These are especially useful for bosses where the screen doesn't tend to scroll. Now onto the stages. The Super Nintendo version has 11 stages plus an extra bonus stage accessible via the lollipop game mode from the main menu. Each stage has music that is usually a remix of a classical music composition. They're fun and add to the quirkiness of the game. There's usually a theme for the stage, the mini-boss, and boss, so I've made sure to play each accordingly as it's on screen. Anyway, the first stage is Pirate Island. It's a nice beach side stage with ruined ships in the background. This stage has a lot of flying chickens to take out, as well as other enemies such as penguins, crabs, and treasure chests that spawn more enemies. The mini-boss is a pirate ship that has a giant kitten and is being manned by penguins. Yep, you heard me. And just when you finish fighting and come to terms with what you just saw, you face the stage's real boss. It's this giant pirate captain penguin who is being guarded by its crewmates. So, how do you take it out, you ask? Well, duh, shoot it in the belly button. Just like any other boss. After a small intermission, you begin the next stage, Las Vegas. It's a stage that has a city as a backdrop with some constellations in the sky. As a kid, I thought this was a carnival stage, but now I have learnt that this is intended to be Vegas. It makes sense. I hear Vegas is plagued by chickens. So yeah, after being greeted by the Vegas chickens, you must then navigate a stage that loops vertically. The stage has these giant clowns that you shoot in the head to take out, and then also hordes of chickens, insects, and hedgehogs. Also, the clowns will shoot a bunch of bubbles at you if you don't take them out quick enough. The mini boss for this stage is what appears to be a Vegas showgirl who moves up and down the screen. I don't think you can actually damage her. You just have to maneuver yourself under her legs as she moves across the screen. Eventually she just goes off screen and you arrive at the boss. An eagle wearing a top hat and a bow tie that shoots feathers and screams at you. <laughs> Boy, that was a sentence. The boss is pretty straightforward, just shoot it in the mouth until it explodes and becomes naked. Perfectly normal boss fight. After another small intermission, it's now time for the labyrinth. So, the setting of this stage is in a castle that is themed around ice cream. It's another stage that loops vertically infinitely, but now you must navigate a maze to avoid getting crushed. The stage has penguins, chickens, and birds all over the place as you try to find the path through the maze. Eventually, you reach this section where you need to shoot a bunch of sprinkles to make yourself a path, and also avoid these amoeba-looking things. Not exactly sure what they are, but shortly after this, you reach a section that has a bunch of pumpkins with sneakers, trying to eat you and the stage up. The final part of the stage involves navigating another labyrinth, where you follow a tight corridor, avoid penguins, and cut out a path in the sprinkles. Then you come to the stage's boss. It's a temple where you must fight a bunch of flying lips, because of course you do. The music for this fight is just perfect. I love it. After an intermission of flying cupid pigs, it's time for the next stage, Japan. It's a nice looking stage with cherry blossom trees and inactive volcanoes. The stage features the usual suspects of chickens, bugs, and penguins, but mixes it up by having sumos that will try to slap you with their mawashi, or as I called it as a kid, sumo underwear. About halfway through the stage, the difficulty ramps up as the cherry blossom trees and volcanoes attempt to murder you. The cherry blossom trees will move forward periodically in an attempt to collide with you, and the volcanoes will become active and shoot eggplants at you. Yes, you heard me. Eggplants. After avoiding a near-death experience with eggplants, you then come to the boss. It's a sumo pig with whiskers like a cat who stomps the ground and causes enemies to drop from the ceiling. All you have to do is shoot the pig until it explodes. After this, you move on to an intermission where enemies begin to look normal. They look like spaceships, something that, yeah, you would expect to be in space. But then you take a closer look and realize that these spaceships are actually Moai, those stone statue heads that are found on Easter Island. So yeah, so much for being normal. So wait, flying Moai? Gee, I wonder what this stage is going to be like. 
Welcome to the Mo'ai Battleship, a battleship commanded by Captain Kebab that features a bunch of Mo'ai shooting at you, including this one with six eyes that's smoking a pipe. The stage is relatively short, the camera auto-scrolls you around the ship and you just have to do your best to survive and lay ruin to the ship. Eventually you leave Captain Kebab alone and head to the boss, a gigantic Moai statue that shoots Moai rockets out of its mouth. So how are we doing? Have I convinced you on how weird and quirky this game is yet? Well if not, you'll be glad to know that the next stage is a giant pachinko machine with plenty of penguins and chickens to take out. This stage can get really hectic if you end up dying, as there are a lot of enemies to deal with, so having basic weapons makes it really difficult. But this stage is also very generous with power-up drops, bells, and blizzards, so it can make for some really fun gameplay. The boss for this stage is called the Viva Core, but as a kid I called it the Pinball Scorpion, because I had no idea what else to call it. So yeah, Pinball Scorpion. Aim for its bumper and it goes down quick. After the chaos of Pachinko, we come to a more laid-back setting called Bubbles and Clouds. You pop a bunch of bubbles and shoot some rabbit-looking things. Pretty normal so far, right? Ah! Oh, it's a pig! So yeah, that's the stage in a nutshell. You just pop a whole bunch of bubbles. Eventually, you reach the boss, which is a giant blonde woman who shoots bubbles out of her fingers that then pop into babies. <laughs> I, I can't describe, it's like, the noise that she's making and then just babies coming out of her fingers. The chat is, is this how babies, baby is formed? Need I say more? Another intermission and we arrive at the ice cave. When you put all these stages side by side, this is probably the most normal looking stage. It's just a cave with enemies that you would expect to be in an underwater stage. It's really surprising how normal this stage is. I remember the first time playing through the game and being like, okay, when's the weird kicking in? But it never really does. I mean, even the boss isn't weird. It's probably the most normal looking boss in the whole game and that's saying something. It's a puffer fish that keeps getting bigger and bigger as you shoot it until it blows up. Again, on theme for an underwater stage, so as a whole, the ice cave is pretty normal when you compare it to everything else. Well, after another intermission, the game goes back to weird immediately in the next stage, the cemetery. This stage is full of skeletons, zombie penguins, and wisps. The thing I enjoyed the most about this stage was about halfway through the stage it starts to rain, and your character gets an umbrella. It looks great on Pentaro especially. The mini boss for this stage is a bunch of creatures that look like one-eyed parasols with their tongues out. I don't know how else to describe them, but uh, here's their concept art. You just need to avoid them and take them out one by one. After beating them, you come to the stage's boss, which according to the game's manual is the Ghost of a Courtesan. It's a pretty cool fight visually. It's probably my favorite one in the whole game. The next stage is the public bath. This stage is great. It has a lot of characters in the background taking baths, and also penguins running around on fire. Which, yeah, how on earth are they being lit on fire in a bathhouse? Anyway, the sumos make a return and are constantly trying to snipe you with their sumo underwear. And there's also these pigs drying themselves, making bubbles that you need to shoot. The second half of the stage has this section where you must pick a path and the path will have a combination of easy to beat pigs and hard to take out skeletons. You might get it wrong a few times, but once you know, it's easy enough to get through. The boss is a giant octopus taking a bath whose scrubbing sends bubbles your way. So yeah, it's on point for the theme of this stage. This fight can be pretty tough if you die, because starting from the checkpoint doesn't really give you much power-ups. So you need to invest the little power-ups you get into speed, otherwise you can't dodge the bubbles reliably. It's a pretty tough fight, but it's a lot of fun. And now we head to the final stage in the main game, Zio's Fortress. This stage is a bright stage with a bunch of penguins running around in a panic around the fortress. They operate furnaces, computers, and various other bits of machinery. I just love seeing them frantically run around. The mini boss for this stage involves dodging this contraption that allows some penguins to take a shower. And then shortly after you go through this gate that is being guarded by these weird tentacles. So now we're at the game's final boss. This fight is weird. I don't know how else to put it. It doesn't attack you at all. 
You just take out all the arms and then the fight ends. And this cutscene plays where the entire planet is dizzy and you crash into the screen. As a kid, this always confused me because I thought I was getting the bad ending by taking out this boss. I don't know, it just looks sad. I tried not damaging it, but it just sits there and waits. So yeah, don't stress about this one. It's legitimately the game's ending. Weird, but I like it. Okay, the only other thing to talk about is lollipop mode. So, it's a bonus stage that sits outside of the main game. It's a pretty difficult stage that is pretty similar to the Vegas and Labyrinth stages. Only, instead of clowns, it features Moai and these weird faces. What's interesting here is that when you die, you just keep going. In the main game, when you die, it puts you back at a checkpoint. So yeah, not really sure why it's different here. The boss for this stage is a penguin on a bomb. And much like the final boss in the game, it doesn't do any damage to you. It just sits there until you damage it enough. Once you do, it pulls out a sign much like Wile E. Coyote would in a Looney Tunes cartoon, before an explosion happens and a bunch of bells flood the screen. You're then given a score for your efforts. It's a pretty cool stage, but it's always confused me as to why they didn't throw it into the main game. But yeah, that's Parodius. It's a game that I really enjoyed as a kid, and though it's not exactly a long game, it had me coming back to play it over and over again. I was kind of surprised when I learned later on that it didn't release worldwide at the time. I think it's a pretty neat little gem in the Super Nintendo's library. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this look at Parodius for the Super Nintendo. I highly recommend it if you're into shmups or games that are quirky and weird. You'll have a good time for sure. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video, as it'll let me know to keep doing more. Or hey, if you know of any other games that you think are underrated gems, sound off in the comments. I'm always looking for more things to play. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or if you want to see me play Parodius and more, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.